The Thirteenth Tablet. In the third region, civilized mankind did not fully blossom. What to Inanna was entrusted she neglected, other domains, not to her granted, in her heart she coveted. When from Unug Ki, at the count of a thousand years, kingship away was taken, who the calamity by the end of the next millennium could foresee, who the disaster would have prevented. That in less than a third of one shar a calamity unknown would befall, who could foretell? By Anana was the bitter end started, Marduk as raw with destiny tangled, Ninurta and Nergal the unspeakable end with their own hands delivered. Why was Anana with her granted domain not satisfied, why to Marduk did unforgiving she remain? Journeying between Anug Ki and Arata, Anana restless and ungratified was. For her beloved Dumuzi she still mourned, her love's desire unquenched remained. When she flew about, in the sunrays Dumuzi's image she saw shimmering and beckoning, in the nighttime in dream visions he appeared, I will return. He was saying. The glories of his domain in the land of the two narrows to her he was promising. In the sacred precinct of Unug Ki, a house for nighttime pleasure she established. To this Jaiganu young heroes, on the night of their weddings, with sweet words she lured, long life, a blissful future to them she promised, that her lover Dumuzi was she imagined. Each one in the morning in her bed was found dead. It was at that time that the hero Banda, left for dead, alive to Unug Ki returned. By the grace of Utu, of whose seed he was, did Banda from the dead return. A miracle, a miracle, excited Anana shouted, my beloved Dumuzi to me came back. In her abode Banda was bathed, with a sash of fringed cloak on him was fastened. Dumuzi, my beloved. She called him, to her bed, with flowers bedecked, she lured him. When in the morning Banda was alive, with joy Inanna shouted, The power of not dying in my hands was placed, immortality by me is granted. Then to call herself a goddess Inanna decided, the power of immortality it implied. Nanar and Ningal, Inanna's parents, by her proclamation were not pleased, and Lil and Ninurta by Anana's words were disconcerted, Utu, her brother, was bemused, the dead to revive is not possible. Enki and Ninarsak to each other said, In the lands of Ki Enji, the people their good fortune praised, the gods are among us, death they can abolish. So to each other the people said, On the throne of Unug Ki Banda his father in Merkur succeeded, Lugal, great man, his title was. The goddess Ninsen, of Enlil's seed, took him to be her spouse, the hero Gilgamesh, their son, on the throne of Unug Ki Lugal Banda followed. As the years passed and Gilgamesh older grew, of life and death to his mother Ninsen he spoke, about the death of his forebears, though of Anunnaki descended, he wondered. Do gods die? His mother he asked, Shall I too, though two-thirds divine, as a mortal over the wall climb? So to her he said, As long as on earth you abide, the death of an earthling will you overwhelm. Ninsen to her son said, But if to Nibiru you will be taken, long life thereon you will attain. To take Gilgamesh aloft, to Nibiru journey, Ninsen to Utu the commander appealed, Endlessly Ninsen to Utu appealed, day after day with him she pleaded, let Gilgamesh to the landing place go. Utu in the end agreed, to guide and protect him, Ninarsak a double of Gilgamesh fashioned. Enkidu, as by Enki created, was he called, of a womb he was not born, blood in his veins was not. With the comrade Enkidu Gilgamesh to the landing place journeyed, Utu with oracles his progress oversaw. At the entrance to the cedar forest, its fire-belching monster their way blocked. 
With trickery they the monster confused, to pieces it they broke. When the secret entrance to the tunnels of the Anunnaki they found, by the bull of heaven, a creature of Enlil, with deathly snorts they were challenged. To the gates of Unugki the monster them chased, at the city's ramparts by Enkidu it was smitten. When Enlil this heard, with agony he cried, in the heavens of Anu was his wailing heard, for in his heart Enlil well knew, bad indeed was the omen. For having the bull of heaven slain, to perish in waters Enkidu was punished. Gilgamesh, having by Ninsen and Utu been instructed, of the slaying was absolved. Still the long life of Nibiru seeking, Gilgamesh to proceed to the place of the chariots by Utu was permitted. After many adventures the land of Tilman, the fourth region, he reached. Through its subterranean tunnels he proceeded, in a garden of precious stones Ziasudra he met. The events of the deluge Ziasudra to Gilgamesh related, the secret of long living to Gilgamesh he revealed. A plant in the garden's well was growing, Ziasudra and his spouse from getting old it prevented. Unique of all the plants on earth it was, by it a man full vigor can regain. Man at old age is young again. This is the plant's name, Ziasudra to Gilgamesh said. A gift of Enki, with Enlil's blessing, on the Mount of Salvation to us was granted. When Ziasudra and his spouse were asleep, Gilgamesh to his feet stones tied. Into the well he dived, the plant of being young again he grasped and uprooted. With the plant in his satchel through the tunnels he hurried, to Unug Ki he made his way. When he tired and was asleep, a snake by the plant's fragrance was attracted. The plant did the snake snatch from the sleeping Gilgamesh, with the plant it vanished. In the morning, his loss discovering, Gilgamesh sat and wept. To Unug Ki empty-handed he returned, as a mortal therein he died. Seven more kings in Unug Ki after Gilgamesh reigned, then its kingship to an end came. Precisely when the count of a thousand earth years was completed it was. To Urim, the city of Nanar and Ningal, was kingship of the first region transferred. To all these matters that in the other regions were occurring, Marduk much heed gave. By Anana's dreams and visions, to Dumuzi's domain alluding, Ra was disturbed. To counteract Anana's schemes of expansions he was determined, in the matters of resurrection and immortality he found much to ponder. The thought of divine godship to him greatly appealed, to be a great god himself he announced. By what to Gilgamesh, in good measure an earthling, was permitted, Ra was angered, but a clever way wherewith the loyalty of kings and people to retain he deemed it. If demigods the gateway to immortality are shown, let this to the kings of my region apply. So did Marduk, in the second region by the name Ra known, to himself words say, Let the kings of my region of Netaru offspring be, to Nibiru in an afterlife journey. So did Ra in his realm decree. The kings how to build tombs facing eastward he taught, to the priest scribes a long book he dictated, the afterlife journey in detail in it was described. How to reach the duat, the place of the celestial boats, in the book was told, how to there, by a stairway to heaven, to the imperishable planet journey, of the plant of life partake, the waters of youth to satiation drink. Of the coming of the gods to earth by Ra were the priests taught, gold is the splendor of life, to them he said. The flesh of the gods it is. To the kings Ra said. To make expeditions to the Abza and the lower domain, gold to obtain, the kings he instructed. When by the force of weapons the kings of Ra lands not theirs conquer, his brother's realms he invaded. Their ire he caused to arise and grow. What is Marduk up to? The brothers each other asked. That over as he tramples. 
To their father Enki they appealed, to Ptah his father Ra did not listen. To capture all adjoining lands the kings of Megan and Mela Ra directed, to be the master of the four regions was his heart's plan. The earth is mine to rule. So adamantly to his father he said. Now this is the account of how Marduk Supreme himself declared and Babali built, and how Inanna, warrior kings commanding, blood made flow and sacrileges allowed. After kingship to Urim from Unug Ki was transferred, Nanar and Ningal on the people smiled. As his rank of thirty befitting, as the god of the moon Nanar was worshipped, as the count of the moon months in a year, twelve festivals each year he decreed, to each of the twelve great Anunnaki a month and its festival were dedicated. Throughout the first region to the Anunnaki gods, great and lesser ones, shrines and sanctuaries were built, the people to their gods could directly pray. In the first region, civilization from Ki Enji to other neighboring lands spread, in cities of man local rulers as righteous shepherds were designated, artisans and farmers, shepherds and weavers their products far and wide exchanged, laws of justice were decreed, contracts of trade, of espousal and divorce were honored. In schools the young ones studied, scribes hymns and proverbs and wisdom recorded. Abundance and happiness were in the lands, quarrels and encroachments there also were. All the while Inanna in her skyship from land to land roamed. Near the upper sea with Utu she frolicked. To the domain of her uncle Ishkar she went, Dudu, beloved, she called him. To the people who in the upper plain of the two rivers dwelt Inanna took a liking, the sound of their tongue she found pleasant, to speak their language she learned. By the name of the planet Lahamu in their tongue Ishtar they called her, Uruk her city Unugki they called, Dudu as a dad in their language they pronounced. Sin, lord of oracles, her father Nanar they named, Urim city by the Mur was called. Shamash, bright sun, in their tongue Utu they called, him too they worshipped. Enlil by them father Elul was called, Nipper by them was Nibru Ki, Ki Enji, land of the lofty watchers, Shumer in their language was named. In Shumer, the first region, kingship between the cities was rotated, in the second region, diversity by Ra was not permitted, alone to reign he wished. The eldest of heaven, firstborn who is on earth. Thus by the priests to be known he wanted. The foremost from the earliest times. So he decreed in the hymns to be called, Lord of Eternity, he who everlastingness has made, over all the gods presiding, the one who is without equal, the great solitary and sole one. So did Marduk, as Ra, above all other gods himself and place, their powers and attributes to himself he by himself assigned, as Enlil the firstum for lordship and decrees, as Ninurta for the hoe and combat, as Adad for lightning and thunder, as Nanar for illuminating the night, as Utuim Shamash, as Nergal over the lower world I reign, as Gibble the golden depths I know, whence copper and silver come I have found, as Ningish Siddha numbers and their count I command, the heavens my glory bespeak. By these proclamations the Anunnaki leaders were greatly alarmed, to their father Enki the brothers of Marduk spoke, Nergal to Ninurta their concerns conveyed. What has you overpowered? Enki to his son Marduk said, Unheard of are your pretensions. The heavens, the heavens my supremacy bespeak. Marduk his father Enki answered, The bull of heaven, in Lil's constellation sign, by his own offspring was slain, in the heavens the age of the ram, my age, is coming, unmistakable the omens are. In his abode, in Eridu, the circle of the twelve constellations Enki examined, on the first day of spring, 
the beginning of a year, sunrise was carefully observed, in the constellation stars of the bull was the sun that day rising. In Nibru Ki and Urim in Lil and Nanar the observations made, in the lower world, where the instrument's station had been, Nergal the results attested. Still remote was the time of the ram, the age of the bull of Enlil it still was. In his domains, Marduk in his assertions did not relent. By Nabu he was assisted, to domains not his emissaries he sent, to the people that his time has come to announce. To Ningish Zidda the Anunnaki leaders appealed, how do the people the skies to observe to teach? In his wisdom stone structures Ningish Siddha devised, Ninurta and Ishkar to erect them helped. In the settled lands, near and far, the people how the skies to observe they taught, that the sun in the constellation of the bull was still rising to the people they showed. With sorrow did Enki these ongoings watch, how fate the rightful order twisted he pondered, after the Anunnaki as gods themselves declared, on mankind's support they instead are dependent. In the first region to unify the lands under one leader the Anunnaki decided, a warrior king they desired. To Inanna, of Marduk the adversary, the task of the right man to find they entrusted. A strong man whom on her journeys she had met and loved, Inanna to Enlil indicated, Arbakad, of four garrisons the commander, was his father, a high priestess his mother was. Scepter and crown Enlil him gave, Sheru kin, righteous regent, Enlil him appointed. As on Nibiru once was done, a new crown city, the lands to unify, was established, Agade, the unified city, they named it, not far from Kishi it was located. By Enlil was Sheru kin empowered. Anana with her weapons of brilliance his warriors accompanied. All the lands from the lower sea to the upper sea to his throne obedience gave, at the borders of the fourth region, to protect it, his troops were stationed. With a cautious eye raw on Anana and Sheru kin constantly gazed, then as a falcon on his prey he pounced. From the place where Marduk the tower to heaven reaching to build had attempted, Sacred soil from there to a gade did Sheru kin move, therein the heavenly bright object to implant. Enraged did Marduk to the first region rush, with Nabu and followers to the tower's place they came. Of the sacred soil, I alone the possessor am, by me shall a gateway of the gods be established. So did Marduk vehemently announce, instructions the river to divert to his followers he gave. Dikes and walls in the place of the tower they raised, the Asagil, house for the utmost god, for Marduk they built. Babali, the gateway of the gods, Nabu in his father's honor named it, in the heart of the Eden, in the midst of the first region, Marduk himself established. Anana's fury no boundary knew, with her weapons on Marduk's followers' death she inflicted. The blood of people, as never before on earth, like rivers flowed. To his brother Marduk Nergal to Babali came, for the sake of the people Babali to leave him he persuaded. Let us peacefully wait for the true signs of heaven. Nergal to his brother said. To depart Marduk agreed, from land to land the skies to watch he traveled, Amun, the unseen one, in the second region was Ra henceforth called. For a while was Anana appeased, two sons of Sheru kin his peaceful successors were. Then on the throne of Agade Sheru kin's grandson ascended, Naram Sin, by Sin loved, he was called. In the first region in Lil and Ninurta absent were, to the lands beyond the oceans they went. In the second region Ra was away, as Marduk in other lands he traveled. Her chance in her hands to seize all powers Anana envisioned, Naram Sin to seize all lands she commanded. To march against Megan and Mela, Marduk domains, Naram Sin she instructed. 
The sacrilege of an earthling's army through the fourth region passing Naram Sin committed, Megan he invaded, the sealed Ecker, house which like a mountain is, to enter he attempted. By the sacrileges and transgressions in Lil was infuriated, upon Naram Sin and a gate a curse he put. By a bite of a scorpion did Naram Sin die, by the command of Enlil was a gate wiped out. At the count of a thousand and five hundred earth years did this happen. Now this is the account of the prophecy by Galzu to Enlil in a vision given, about Marduk's supremacy it was, how a calamity to survive a man to choose. After Marduk Amun became, kingship in the second region disintegrated, disorder and confusion reigned. After a gate was wiped out, in the first region there was disorder, confusion reigned. In the first region kingship was in disarray, from cities of gods to cities of man it moved about, Anug Ki, Lagash, Urim and Kish, Izan and to faraway places kingship was shifting. Then in Lil, with a new consulting, kingship in the hands of Nanar deposited, to Urim, in whose soil the divine heavenly bright object remained implanted, kingship for the third time was granted. In Urim a righteous shepherd of men Nanar as king appointed, Ur-Namu was his name. Equity in the lands Ur-Namu established, to violence and strife an end he made, in all the lands prosperity was abundant. It was at that time that in the nighttime in Lil a dream vision had. The image of a man to him appeared, bright and shining like the heavens he was. As he approached and by Enlil's bed stood, Enlil the white-haired Galzu recognized. In his left hand a tablet of lapis lazuli he was holding, the starry heavens on it were designed. By the twelve constellation signs were the heavens divided, to them with his left hand Galzu pointed. From the bull to the ram Galzu his pointing shifted, three times the pointing he repeated. Then in the dream vision Galzu spoke up and to Enlil thus said, The righteous time of benevolence and peace by evil doing and bloodshed will be followed. In three celestial portions the ram of Marduk the bull of Enlil will replace, one who himself as supreme god has declared supremacy on earth will seize. A calamity as has never before occurred, by fate decreed, will happen. As at the time of the deluge, a righteous and worthy man must be chosen, by him and his seed will civilized mankind, as by the creator of all intended, be preserved. So did Galzu, the divine emissary, to Enlil in the dream vision say. When Enlil from the nighttime dream vision awakened, there was no tablet beside his bed. Was it an oracle from heaven or did I at all in my heart imagine? Enlil to himself wondered, to none of his sons, Nanar among them, nor to Ninlil did he of the dream vision tell. Among the priests in the Nibru Ki temple Enlil of celestial savants inquired, Terhu, an oracle priest, to him the high priest indicated. Of Ibru, of Arbakad the grandson, he was descended, sixth generation of Nibru Ki priests he was. With the royal daughters of Urim's kings they were intermarried. Get yourself to Nanar's temple in Urim, the heavens for celestial time observe. Seventy-two earth years is the count of a celestial portion, the passage of three thereof carefully record. So did Enlil to Terhu the priest say, the prophesied time he made him count. While Enlil the dream vision and its portents pondered, Marduk from land to land went. Of his supremacy the people he was telling, to followers gain was his purpose. In the lands of the upper sea and the lands on Ki Enji bordering, Nabu, Marduk's son, was the people inciting. To seize the fourth region was his plan. Between the dwellers of the west and the dwellers of the east clashes were occurring, kings' hosts of warriors formed, caravans ceased going, 
the walls of cities were raised. What Galzu had foretold indeed is happening. Enlil to himself said, Upon Terhu and his sons, of worthy lineage descended, Enlil set his gaze. This is the man to choose, by Galzu indicated. Enlil to himself said, To Nanar, without the dream vision revealing, Enlil to his son thus said, In the land between the rivers whence Arbakad had come, a city like Urim establish, a home abode away from Urim let it for you and Ningal be. In its midst a temple shrine establish, the priest Prince Terhu in charge thereof appoint. By his father's word abiding, Nanar in the land of Arbakad the city of Haran established. To be high priest in its temple shrine Terhu he sent, his family with him, when two celestial portions out of the prophesied three were completed did Terhu to Haran go. At that time Ur Namu, the joy of Urim, in the western lands from his chariot fell and died. On the throne of Urim his son Shulga him succeeded, full of vile and eager for battles Shulga was. In Nibru Ki himself high priest he anointed, in Unug Ki the joys of Anana's vulva he sought, warriors from the mountain lands, to Nanar not beholden, in his army he enlisted, with their help the western lands he overran, the sanctity of mission control center he ignored. In the sacred fourth region his foot he set, king of the four regions himself he declared. About the defilements Enlil was angered, about the invadings Enki to Enlil spoke, the rulers of your region all bounds have exceeded. Enki to Enlil bitterly said, Of all the troubles Marduk is the fountainhead. Enlil to Enki retorted, Still the dream vision to himself keeping, Enlil to Terhu his attention turned. Upon Ibruam, the eldest son of Terhu, Enlil cast the choosing gaze. A princely offspring, valiant and with priestly secrets acquainted Ibruam was, to protect the sacred places, the chariot's ascents and descents enable, Enlil Ibruam to go commanded. No sooner did Ibruam from Haran depart than in that city Marduk arrived. The defilements he too had observed, as birth pangs of a new order he them deemed. From Haran, on the threshold of Shumer, his final thrust he planned, from Haran, at the edge of Ishkar's domain situated, the raising of armies he directed. When twenty and four earth years of his sojourn in Haran had passed, Marduk to the other gods, of whomever descended, tearfully an appeal made, confessing his transgressions but insisting on his lordship, to them he thus said, O gods of Haran, O great gods who judge, learn my secrets. As I girdle my belt, my memories I remember. I am the divine Marduk, a great god, in my domains as Ra am I known. For my sins to exile I went, to the mountains have I gone, in many lands I wandered, from where the sun rises to where the sun sets I went, to the land of Ishkar I came. Twenty-four years in the midst of Haran I nested, an omen in its temple I sought, until when? About my lordship an omen in the temple I asked. Your days of exile are completed. To me the oracle in the temple said, O great gods who the fates determine, let me to my city set my course, my temple a sagil as an everlasting abode establish, a king in Babylon install, in my temple house let all the Anunnaki gods assemble, my covenant accept. So did Marduk, confessing and appealing, to the other gods his coming announce. By his appeal for their submission the Anunnaki gods were disturbed and alarmed. To a great assembly, council to take, and Lil them all summoned. All the Anunnaki leaders in Nibruki gathered, Enki and Marduk's brothers also came. About the happenings all of them were agitated, opposed to Marduk and Nabu they all were. In the council of the great gods, accusations were rampant, recriminations filled the chamber. What is coming no one can prevent. 
let us Marduk's supremacy accept. Enki alone counseled, if the time of the ram is coming, let us Marduk of the bond heaven earth deprive. Enlil in anger proposed, to obliterate the place of the celestial chariots all except Enki agreed, to use therefore the weapons of terror Nergal suggested. Only Enki was opposed. Of the decision, earth to anew the words pronounced, anew to earth the words repeated. What was destined to be, by your decision to undo will fail. So did Enki say as he departed. The evil thing to carry out Ninurta and Nergal were selected. Now this is the account of how fate to destiny did lead, how step by step, some in long forgotten times taken, the great calamity made happen. Now let it for all time be recorded and remembered, when the decision to use the weapons of terror was made, to himself and Lil two secrets kept. To no one, before the terrible decision was taken, did Enlil the secret of Galzu's dream vision reveal. To no one, until the fateful decision was made, did Enlil his knowledge of the terror's hiding place disclose. When, despite all protestations, the council to use the weapons of terror permitted, when Enki, angry and distraught the council chamber left, in his heart was Enki smiling. Only he knew where the weapons were hidden. So did Enki think, for it was he, before Enlil to earth had come, who with Abgal in a place unknown the weapons did hide. That Abgal, to the exiled Enlil, the place disclosed, that to Enki was unknown. When Enki this second secret heard, in his heart a wishful thought he harbored. That after such a long sojourn, the weapon's terror would have evaporated. Little did Enki expect the long sojourn a calamity as never before known on earth to cause. Thus it was that without Enki needing, in Lil to the two heroes the hiding place disclosed. Those seven weapons of terror, in a mountain they abide. To them in Lil said, in a cavity inside the earth they dwell with the terror to clad them is required. Then the secret of how the weapons from their deep sleep awaken, Enlil to them did reveal. Before the two sons, one of Enlil, one of Enki, to the hiding place departed, Enlil to them words of forewarning said, Ere the weapons are used, by the Anunnaki must the chariot's place be vacated, the cities must be spared, the people must not perish. In his skyship Nergal to the hiding place soared, Ninurta by his father was delayed. A word to his son alone in Lil wished to say, a secret to him alone reveal. About the prophecy of Galzu and the choosing of Ibruam to Ninurta he told. Hot-headed is Nergal, make sure that the cities are spared, that Ibruam is forewarned. To Ninurta in Lil said, when Ninurta at the weapons place arrived, Nergal from the cavity had already them brought out, as their mees from the long slumber he awakened, to each one of the seven Nergal a task name gave. The one without rival the first weapon he called, the blazing flame he named the second, the one who with terror crumbles he called the third, mountain melter the fourth he called, wind that the rim of the world seeks he named the fifth, the one who above and below no one spares was the sixth, the seventh with monstrous venom was filled, vaporizer of living things he called it. With Anu's blessing were the seven to Nergal and Ninurta given, therewith to destruction reek. When Ninurta at the place of the weapons of terror arrived, to destroy and annihilate was Nergal ready. I shall kill the son, I will annihilate the father. Nergal with vengeance was shouting, The lands they covet will vanish, the sinning cities I will upheaval. So did Nergal enraged announce, Valiant Nergal, will you the righteous with the unrighteous destroy? So did Ninurta his comrade ask, The instructions of Enlil are clear. To the selected targets the way I will lead, you behind me will follow. The decision of the Anunnaki to me is known. Nergal to Ninurta said, 
For seven days and seven nights the signal from Enlil the two awaited. As was his intention, when his waiting was completed, Marduk to Babali returned, in the presence of his followers, with weapons armed, his supremacy he declared. A thousand and seven hundred and thirty-six was the count of earth years then. On that day, on that fateful day, Enlil to Ninurta the signal sent. To Mount Mashu Ninurta departed, behind him Nergal followed. The mount and the plain, in the heart of the fourth region, Ninurta from the skies surveyed. With a squeezing in his heart, to Nergal a sign he gave, keep off. To him he signaled, then the first terror weapon from the skies Ninurta let loose, the top of Mount Mashu with a flash it sliced off, the mount's innards in an instant it melted. Above the place of the celestial chariots the second weapon he unleashed, with a brilliance of seven suns the plains rocks into a gushing wound were made, the earth shook and crumbled, the heavens after the brilliance were darkened, with burnt and crushed stones was the plain of the chariots covered, of all the forests that the plain had surrounded, only tree stems were left standing. It is done. Ninurta from the skyship, his black divine bird, words shouted. The control that Marduk and Nabu so coveted, of it they are forever deprived. Then to emulate Ninurta Nergal desired, to be Era the Annihilator his heart him urged. Following the king's highway, to the verdant valley of the five cities he flew. In the verdant valley where Nabu the people was converting, Nergal as a caged bird to squash him planned. Over the five cities, one after the other, era upon each from the skies a terror weapon sent, the five cities of the valley he finished off, to desolation they were overturned. With fire and brimstones were they upheavaled, all that lived there to vapor was turned. By the awesome weapons were mountains toppled, where the sea waters were barred the bolt broke open, down into the valley the sea's waters poured, by the waters was the valley flooded, when upon the city's ashes the waters poured, steam to the heavens was rising. It is done, Era in his skyship shouted. In Nergal's heart there was no more vengeance. Surveying their evil handiwork, the two heroes by what they saw were puzzled. By a darkening of the skies were the brilliances followed, then a storm to blow began. Swirling within a dark cloud, gloom from the skies an evil wind carried, as the day wore on, the sun on the horizon with darkness it obliterated. At nighttime a dreaded brilliance skirted its edges, the moon at its rising it made disappear. When dawn the next morning came, from the west, from the upper sea, a storm wind began blowing, the dark brown cloud eastward it directed, toward the settled lands did the cloud spread, wherever it reached, death to all that lives mercilessly it delivered, from the valley of no pity, by the brilliances spawned, toward Shumer the death was carried. To Enlil and Enki Ninurta and Nergal the alarm sounded. Unstoppable the evil wind death to all delivers. The alarm in Lil and Enki to the gods of Shumer transmitted, Escape. Escape, to them all they cried out. Let the people disperse, let the people hide. From their cities the gods did flee, like frightened birds from their nests escaping they were. The people of the lands by the evil storm's hand were clutched, futile was the running. Stealthy was the death, like a ghost the fields and cities it attacked, the highest walls, the thickest walls, like floodwaters it passed, no door could shut it out, no bolt could turn it back. Those who behind locked doors hid inside their houses like flies were felled, those who to the streets fled, in the streets were their corpses piled up. Cough and phlegm the chests filled, the mouths with spittle and foam filled up, as the evil wind the people unseen engulfed, their mouths were drenched with blood. Slowly over the lands the evil wind blew, from west to east over plains and mountains it traveled, 
everything that lived, behind it was dead and dying, people and cattle, all alike perished. The waters were poisoned, in the fields all vegetation withered. From Eridu in the south to Sapar in the north did the evil wind the land overwhelm. Babali, where Marduk's supremacy declared, by the evil wind was spared.